Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. History made in front of the entire country today. At least we could all hear it, if not see it. Less than one week before the Iowa caucus, the man who's poised to win the Republican nomination sat in court while his lawyers attempted a last-minute effort to get the ex-president's criminal charges thrown out on immunity grounds. In Donald Trump's federal election interference trial, one of the last chances to hold him accountable for the crimes of January 6th before the upcoming election, his lawyers stood before the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals, probably the second most important court in all the land, and before the nation and those three judges argued that a president can effectively do whatever he wants, no matter how malevolent, without any legal consequences. To authorize the prosecution of a president for his official acts would open a Pandora's box from which this nation may never recover. So can, can I explore sort of the implications of what you're arguing? I understand your position to be that a president is immune from criminal prosecution for any official act that he takes as president, even if that action is taken for an unlawful or unconstitutional purpose. Is that correct? With an, ex with an important exception, which is that if the president is impeached and convicted by the United States Senate in a, you know, proceeding that reflects, you know, widespread political consensus. Okay, so there, there you have it, in case, in case you weren't tracking. So the official position of Donald Trump is that as long as he or any president can hold on to 35 votes in the Senate to avoid impeachment conviction, there can be no, as a matter of constitutional bedrock American law, there can be no criminal accountability for anything he does, no matter how violent or evil. Even as his lawyer was forced to concede having his political opponents murdered. Could a president order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival? That's an official act in order to SEAL Team 6? He, he would have to be and would speedily be, you know, uh, uh, impeached and convicted before the criminal but prosecution. If but if proceed. he weren't, there would be no criminal prosecution, no criminal liability for that? Chief Justice's opinion in Marbury against Madison and uh, uh, and our constitutional tradition and the plain language of the impeachment judgment clause all clearly presuppose that what the founders were concerned about was not. I asked you a yes or no, yes or no question. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team Six to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached would he be subject to criminal prosecution if he were impeached and convicted first? And so, so your answer is. Is, no. is, my answer is qualified, yes. There is a political process that would have to occur under our, the structure of our Constitution, which would require impeachment and conviction by the Senate. Again, all you got to do is hold on to 35 votes. You hold on to 35 votes in the Senate, and you can have your political opponents murdered. You can have anyone murdered. You could do whatever you want. You got 35 votes in the Senate, and there is nothing anyone can do anywhere in this country under the structure they say of the Constitution. They are not trying to hide it. Trump's argument is some of the most breathtaking, aggressive public articulation of a vision of American dictatorship as we have ever seen. And I want to be clear here. I mean, it's obvious, but it's worth stressing this. This was not being made in a fundraising email by like a low level staffer, right? It was not an off the cuff answer on a tarmac. It was not a campaign speech at a rally where he goes off the teleprompter playing to the crowd. This was the considered argument of the lawyer for the man who wants to wield the office of the presidency again. Thankfully, the three judges seemed appropriately skeptical of Trump's arguments. All of your other arguments seem to fall away. Your separation of powers arguments fall away. Your policy arguments fall away if you concede that a president can be criminally prosecuted under some circumstances. Even under um, Clinton, where there's a deal cut, under um, President Nixon, where there's a uh, pardon given, there's an assumption that you could be prosecuted because why enter into those particular acts? I think it's paradoxical to say that his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed allows him to violate criminal laws. Yes, Judge, respectfully, I agree. I do think it's paradoxical. Now, the lawyer for special counsel Jack Smith's office did an admirable job both outlining how ridiculous the ever-shifting legal argument from Trump is, 
And also, again, to reiterate the very dire consequences that could follow from this preposterous theory of presidential immunity if adopted. And the defendant's theory over the course of this litigation has evolved a bit. And I think now before this court, I understand the argument to be principally sort of the principal submission to be, uh, as you've just described, this what we call in our brief, the conditioned precedent argument uh, that there is only liability, criminal liability for a former president if uh, that president has been impeached and convicted. And that is wrong for textual text, textual. Uh, structural, historical reasons, and a host of practical ones, one of which I'll start with, again, to just amplify the point. Um, it would mean that if a, a former president engages in assassination, uh, selling pardons, these kinds of things, and then isn't impeached uh, and convicted, there is no accountability for that, for that individual. And that is, that is frightening. A lawyer from Smith's office also noted that while the criminal prosecution of a former president is unprecedented, so were Trump's crimes against American democracy. Never before has there been allegations that a sitting president has, with private individuals and using the levers of power, sought to fundamentally subvert the Democratic Republic and the electoral system. Uh, and frankly, if that kind of fact pattern arises again, uh, I think it would be awfully scary if there weren't some sort of mechanism by which to reach that uh, in, criminally. And if you're listening to this as a non-lawyer, or even if you're a lawyer who's not, you know, particularly immersed in constitutional law and, and the sort of line of cases about presidential immunity, I mean, just at a lay level, just as a citizen-to-citizen -citizen kind of thing, as fellow members of this democratic polity, it just seems obviously the case that there has to be some kind of legal accountability, the possibility of it. I mean, if a former president who tried to steal an election is running for the White House again to finish the job. What self-respecting republic wouldn't have a way of defending itself against an enemy such as that? And keep in mind, Donald Trump was sitting there the entire time, glowering, according to reporters in the room. The ex-president looked dour, scribbling notes to his lawyers with a sharpie during the prosecution's presentation. And it sounds like his message got through to them because towards the end of the same proceedings, we heard some particularly Trumpian arguments from his attorney when responding to the plain truth put forward by Jack Smith's team. That's not a frightening future. That's our republic. What he is forecasting is a situation where the floodgates will be opened. We are in a situation where uh, we have the prosecution of the chief political opponent who's winning in every poll. Uh, uh presidential election upcoming next year and is being prosecuted by the administration that he's seeking to replace. That is the frightening future. That is tailor-made to launch cycles of recrimination that will shake our republic for the future. Just a really classic Trumpian propagandistic lie right there, casually winning in every poll, said sort of almost as a stipulated aside that no one can rebut, clearly comes directly from Trump. That is the kind of thing the boss wants to hear. And he sits there while three judges weigh his potential freedom. And the entire argument from his legal team, all of it today, was just about as chilling a warning as to what is at stake in this election as anything we've encountered thus far, which is saying something, save for the actual bloody spectacle of January 6th. Today's arguments were clearly a test. They felt like that in the moment. You could feel it. Like, is this going to hold? Are the guardrails of our democracy still in place? Or is Trump going to be allowed to become the dictator he's always dreamed of being, free from any legal accountability for his actions? Everyone in that room today, a hazard to say, understood that fact. Everyone listening at home should as well.